Hey, guess what? What's that? I'm back. Yeah? We're the proud parents. Come check yeah. this out. I can't wait to see this. What we got? The boy, girl, what is it? It's cold out here. Oh, it is cold. Hey, check it out. We this? got the big bite grinder. The number 12, so yeah. it's not the biggest, it's not the next to the biggest, but I think it's the next to the biggest. Right, it's not the right. So, <laughs> but they we also got the double grind attachment, which means when you grind it, you don't have to go push it back through again. That's awesome. I've got the very last one in Biloxi. So, I'm excited about that. This thing to work. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, look, got Jack Drink Water from uh, Mobile. Check his channel out. I'm gonna put a link below. But uh, Jack and I have done some uh, other videos together. Always a pleasure having you here, man. Glad Thanks being here. He came to Smokehouse Bayou International Headquarters because we're gonna do jalapeno cheddar smokies. Are they gonna be the little smokies or big smokies? Well, no, they're gonna be uh, probably about a seven millimeter I think is the diameter um, but we're gonna cut them whatever size you want to not yeah see I'm used to saying smokies is a little right, bit right. saucy too just, but these would be more considered like a snack stick or a beef stick so we're gonna show you the process of doing that from the taking it from um, the roast all the way grinding it through showing you how we case it and then the stair step tier smoking method to make sure that you don't bust those casings so it's gonna be a fun day, man. All right, I'm ready. We're gonna have a good time. All right, hey, y'all stay tuned. Hey guys, first thing we need to do is get these roasts cut up. So we're just gonna cut them. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason really to this. We're just gonna cut them into sizes that will fit into um, the grinder. And we'll do the, the beef and the pork practically the same way. Master meat slicer. Good. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you might have had a little bit of practice. Man, all I've never been trained. I just dived in there, I dove in there and started doing it, you know? All right, we got it sliced up. All right, Jack, what we've got is we've got our bayou dust that we use on our chipotle uh, jerky. That's what we're going to season it with today. And we also have some pink curing salt. Yet again, something else you can get from Academy Sports. And I'm gonna send them guys a bill. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> but anyway, 12 pounds of meat. It's gonna be about two and a quarter pounds of bayou dust and about a half an ounce of this curing salt. So I've already poured it in there. We're just gonna kind of mix it up like this. And we'll get the meat seasoned. Then we'll run it through the grinder. So, uh, That's really good. So, do you, let me ask you something. If this is a curveball for you, then you just let me know, okay? Mm -hmm. So, we're about ready to put this on there, but I, my question is, do you think it's a, a difference between seasoning this now before the grind or after the grind? You, you, do you see any difference? Uh, or, in I your experience, know, well, does it make a difference? I like to, I would season it before and let the grind and do the mixture of it you know okay. I mean I just don't know if you can go wrong as soon as you get all the ingredients in there and it's ground and mixed up I think it'll be fine okay so, all right well, I'm gonna go ahead and season this up I don't think there's any rhyme or reason about that look at that boom now that's got the that's the bayou dust and it's got the curing salt in there oh boy now if I do this Jack and I don't sneeze it will be a miracle because that paprika and that uh, cayenne pepper, <laughs> it gets to working on you. This is all the, the seasoning that we're gonna use that didn't stick to the meat originally, you know? And so as we grind it through, then the next grind will help, we'll work it all in and regrind it into there. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen here.
one's got the bigger knife on this side and the smaller or plate, I guess is what you would call it. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, it's a real nice attachment that'll save you some time. Now we're gonna run it through twice anyway, simply because we're doing beef and pork. But if we were just grinding up one type of meat, we probably wouldn't have to grind it twice, you know. You start factoring in the seasoning and all that kind of stuff, that might dictate that you're gonna drink the grind it twice, but otherwise, uh, like when I make boudin or something like that and I grind it through here, I don't only have to grind it just one time. So it saves you, saves you a complete additional run when you get that attachment, which I think is worth the money. all that seasoning work back in there and we'll run it through again. Making a mess for you, Miss Shayla. Now that means it's gonna be good. <laughs> That's what I was always told. Shayla, you're gonna make a mess and it ain't gonna taste good. Just tell me when to stop or I might find it wrong. Keep doing it till I get tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> <laughs> And to me, there's nothing like just knowing that that meat right there is freshly ground and there's no yeah. water added to it. And, right. You know, it's from one animal. Well, actually, right. in this case, too, it's a hog right. and a beef. Yep. You know, a, a hog and a, and a uh, and beef. So yep. it's not like ground beef, and you don't know if they're scrapping that from 50 different animals. Right. So, yep. You know, I remember the first time I ever even thought of that thought. Like, I never thought about the fact that I might have ate a hamburger that had 50 different cows represented. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right. that thought was like, oh my gosh, you know, so. Well, it's not yeah. an everyday thought that somebody thinks yeah. about. But you know? grinding your own beef is a huge advantage. Yep. I'm liking this. It looks good. It's like you're enjoying that. Got these jalapenos. I'm just cutting these up in the little uh, rounds here. And we got one pound of jalapenos. So that was one pound to 12 pounds of meat. Yep. And we're leaving the seeds in because we like it spicy. That's how we roll. In there, you're going to mix it for us, right? Sure. All right. Yeah, go ahead. I'll let you. Okay. It's my turn to play in the ground beef. Mm. Now, Jack, what I figured is we would mix these in together, grind these jalapenos in on the second grind of this meat, and then after that, we'll hand mix the, uh, the, the, cheese, the in. cheese in. What you think about I that? I think that's a great idea. Okay. Well, that's about as good as I can mix this with this. We'll just start grinding it. All right. <clears throat> All right, one tip, and I, you know, I mess this up sometimes, but it's good to get something down in the hopper first. So when that motor cuts on, it's got something down in there and it kind of lubricates, you know, instead of it going dry. Of course, now it's got stuff in there. So we're gonna start grinding this, y'all ready? Let's do it. Do you want me to do anything right in there? I'll just reach in there and get a handful when I get Jalapeno. The jalapeno is really good. Yeah, you can see that jalapeno coming out in there. That's going to be awesome. You know, that bayou dust that we're using as a seasoning here, are you willing to give up any secrets on that? Well, I tell you what, when uh, our chipotle jerky that, you, uh, that we sell, that's what we use is bayou dust. So this exact seasoning how that season so yeah it's got a good chipotle flavor to it. so the only thing you're really giving up is chipotle <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should change the name of this to jalapeno cheddar chipotle smokies i think that would be more accurate there you go yeah there you have it. you could call it jalapeno cheddar chipotle smokies made by two studs from the south <laughs> if you want to get real Real uh, accurate, you know, but that's just up to you. Right. <laughs> I, you know what? I can hear people clicking off this video right now. As soon as you mention Where you the going? Studs. 
Hey man, we got it ground up. We got the jalapenos in there. Now we just gotta add the two pounds of cheese. All right, let's do it. All right. Man, that's gonna be good. You can smell that chipotle. Yeah, you can smell, you know that. I'm trying not to hear it go down in there. Man, that looks good. You think so? Yeah. All right. It's nice and blended. All right, so we ready to fill this thing up, I guess, yeah? Yeah, man. All right, we're just gonna put the collagen casing on the tube here. And usually when we kind of fill this up, it holds about three foot of, uh, of tubing. Cut this off. We're gonna tie a little knot in the end, but I'm gonna I'm gonna loosely tie it through, uh, at the beginning because it'll have a little air in this till we push that air out and get that sausage coming through. There you go. You can see that. So we get that going, then I'll go ahead and cinch up that knot. And I'm gonna feed this to Jack. Hey, while we're stuffing these casings, I remember we need to get a little wood in the water. What are we gonna be smoking these smokies on? Well, we talked about it in there. How about we use a mixture of cherry wood and hickory wood? Sounds good to me. Hey, where'd you get that wood at? <laughs> <laughs> they have it at Academy Sports and outdoors. We're gonna throw it in this five gallon bucket of water and let that for about 30 minutes before we put it on the pit. Okay, just... Whew, man, it's finally time to load the smoker. I mean, by the time you cut it up and grind it and, and, and season it and everything, it takes a little while to get to this step, so we're very excited. We're loading the smoker right now, and you can see we kind of put it in a little curved pattern there so it'll sit on these racks easily. Uh, normally, stuff like this, you'd probably smoke in a hanging situation, but we're going to make it work on this Southern Pride. All right, we're gonna be putting chick. Uh, I want to. I just called it hickory and cherry chicory. I don't know. <laughs> you chicken. I like that. Chicory. <laughs> we're gonna be smoking with chicory today. Some cherry wood and some hickory. So let's get this thing fired up. I thought I came here to make a video about making smokies. I didn't know I was gonna be put to work and hey, not get paid. When, when you call Jack and say. Hey man, I got a great idea for a video. You always do a do something that requires it to be in the smoker for about four hours, so you get a half a day of free labor out of him. <laughs> Sucker! <laughs> All right, guys, look, we've uh, we've had these on the smoker for four hours and about twenty five minutes. Yep, exactly. Okay, and uh, we started out at one sixty five, and basically kept them there for about three and a half hours. Then we went up to 185 for only about an hour, I guess. Is that right? Three and a half hours. Yeah, Maybe a little about an hour. So we're gonna check the internal temperature. We're looking for 165, right? Anything above it. So, we're gonna go in the center of this puppy right here. We are, and we're right there. We're one, let me just make sure I'm in the center. All right, we're at 167. I don't know if you can see that, Jack. But yep, no, I can see it. We're hitting internal temps. We're checking on one more. Yeah, 177. All right, so what we're gonna do, we can, we can just roll this car around. That's a good there. idea. We've got a little ice bath here. We're gonna take them out. Just throw them in this bath. We wanna cool them down. down around 40 or so but you're going to see a change in this casing it's going to get a little more firm and you know how when you eat your snick uh stick the smokies or sticks they have that pop to it it's going to add to that pop a little bit that snap i should say and then once we get them cooled down we're going to cut them to what our desired length is That's like a shock bath right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've been in the sauna all day and then they make you get in that ice bath. 
But man, these have got pretty color on them. Yeah, they do. I think I can get more than one at a time. I can't wait to try them out. All right, the bath is over. It's time to start cutting and stacking them up. And man, they are a beautiful mahogany color. Love that mahogany color. Look at that. That's a good lighting situation yeah, for y'all. From 12 pounds of meat, two pounds of uh, cheese, and a pound of jalapeno, the yield was about 10 pounds total when we got through with the process. Look, we've got a stack of Smokies from our smoke today, and we're fixing to do a taste test, so stay tuned. Wow, that really did stiffen these things up. Mm-hmm. Got a little snap to it. Mm. I'm try while you're trying. That's good. Tell us what you're tasting. What, what, are you, what flavors are you tasting? Getting the spice from the jalapeno. Can't really distinguish the jalapeno like in a specific sense. Mm. The cool thing is, it's got the Bayou dust has a sweet heat component. Mm -hmm. That's the whole flavor profile that we go for, you know. Mm. And so you can taste that sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, and then here comes the chipotle. Chipotle, the smoke, and the right. smoke. And I guess the cheese. I mean. Kind of just kind of mellows it out a little bit as far as like the, the texture, mm -hmm. but man, that little snap. I mean, the thing about it is, when I eat this, I just want another bite. You know, that's. I know. I you know what I'm, I'm sitting here. What? <laughs> we're trying to get you to say something. Sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's one of those things. So, I tasted the Bayou dust like you a minute ago. Well, an hour or so ago on its own. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely. I'm kind of amazed that the bayou dust flavored that whole thing without you putting anything else in there. So mm -hmm. whatever you, whatever your secret is to the bayou dust. I works. would love, I'll be honest with you, I think you could ramp up the uh, jalapeno for my taste. I love spicy. You can work with that at home if you We <laughs> used a pound. A <laughs> we used a pound, a pound of jalapenos to 12 pounds of. Yeah, and if you're meat. a spicy lover, man, you might, you might ramp that up. You know, you might could put, put put a little bit more jalapeno in it. And I can see the cheese in there. Oh yeah. Delicious. Look, if you make these at home, get ready to hide them, because they will grow legs and disappear. You leave that sitting around. Bird gets out, you got that. This, this is better than any beef stick I've ever had. Right. I mean, you know, and you can tell like this is like legit homemade mm -hmm. deal as, as far as the other. If you had a stack of that sitting at your house, man, that's meal replacement right there. I mean, if somebody wants, this January, they're trying to lose weight, this and that and the other, something like that is a great meal replacement. Yeah. You know, you can take it to work with a bag of almonds. That'll get you through the day, mm -hmm. you know, so. All right, guys, you want to take this home for me? Look. Not take this home, but yeah. like, Did y'all hear that? Video. He said, did you want no, to take, take this home? Take this video home. <laughs> All right, guys, Smokies, homemade. Do it. I see, I thought I was going to do the do it. All right, you do it. All right, you do take it. this home. Okay, here we go. Let's redo this. All right. Smokies at home, homemade now. Do it. <laughs>